Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Monday, May 1st, around 8.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2023. May snowstorm for the record books, blankets, Wisconsin and Michigan. But the big story, six dead after dust storm causes crashes on Interstate 55 in Illinois. Keep calm. It's dust time. Dust storm in Illinois leaves at least six dead after dozens of vehicles crash on a major highway, according to officials. The site was apocalyptic. At least six people were killed after a dust storm caused dozens of vehicles to crash along a major highway in central Illinois on Monday. The crash along I-55 led the interstate closing at Sagamon in Montgomery counties after police say dust from newly plowed fields took over the highway. And... We have some footage here. Take a look. You can see how low the visibility is. No wonder a pileup like this occurred. Now our hearts and prayers go out to those that suffered and those that died. But when you have visibility like this, come on, you need to slow down. Another big story, up to 100 homes were damaged and schools closed after tornado strikes Virginia Beach. This is just after last night we reported on the large tornado that struck uh, eastern, southeastern Florida. Now stories are emerging of neighbors helping neighbors in the aftermath of the EF3 tornado with winds up to 145 miles per hour. The path of the storm was 4.5 miles long. And let's take a look at some residents first spotting the tornado yesterday. Oh my God, we gotta look at the debris. Oh my God, where are we gonna go? Look at those are roofs of houses. Look at that. Okay, okay, I'm coming. Oh dear. Daisy, come. Oh my God. We gotta look at the debris. Oh my God. Where are we gonna go? Look at those are roofs of houses. Look at that. Would you look at that? Well, I hope he wasn't suggesting they go upstairs. That's what it sounded like he was suggesting because the damage was epic. And here is some... Chopper 10 surveying the damage after the tornado cut through the Great Neck section of Virginia Beach Sunday evening. And you can see how different uh, just a few hundred feet makes. Some of the houses are completely spared on one side of the road, where on the other side of the road, it is complete devastation. Now, the good news is that there is plenty of room and shelters in this region for those families that have been affected. But the effect is quite devastating here. These are very substantial homes that have been destroyed. Now you can see here a house right in the back here, nothing but a few shingles missing from that house, while the house across the street completely obliterated. A very sad scene indeed in the Virginia Beach region. So come over to Oppenheimer Ranch Project at Diamond the Dave uh, to stay up to speed with all of the things we talk about on the show and any updates that we have to make during the day. Hey, hey. Now, May snowstorm for the record books. Blankets, parts of Wisconsin and Michigan. Snow totals just after sunrise on Monday already topped 13 inches in Herman, Michigan. 11.1 inches of snow over three lakes and 10.5 over Guile, Wisconsin. And those numbers are going to go well above two feet in some areas. We'll have the update at 7 a.m. for the official snow totals when those numbers come in. And there is a changing pattern. We are going from triple dip La Nina rapidly into one of the biggest El Ninos ever seen in history. Yeah, this is going to be a big one. What does that mean for the weather? Well, it's going to be wet in the desert southwest and cool in the southeast. And the northern tier will be dry, especially the Ohio River Valley, and quite warm in the northwest, all the way up into Intermontane, British Columbia, up into Alaska. 
So that is the typical El Nino pattern, which is looking excellent for us here in the Four Corners region. Here's the full forecast. Persistent low in the northeast, unsettled in the west. A near stationary low in the northwest will continue to bring wet, heavy snow to parts of the upper Great Lakes. Locally heavy rain that could cause flash flooding in the to interior Maine. Yeah, it's insane. A slow moving weather system will slide south along the west coast with rain and mountain snow. Dry, gusty winds from, the, from two systems will sweep fire weather threats in critical in the southwest and upper Midwest. So heads up in those regions for fire weather threats. Let's take a look at the GFS model, which is showing lots of snow through mid-May. Hey, hey. Looking, you can see the snow continuing to fall here. Um, northern Wisconsin and uh, northern Michigan, upwards of two more feet of snow and snow moving into the Sierras, another 16 inches of snow to the high elevations and all of the west in the Rockies. Take a look at that. Even basin and range at the high elevations picking up snow in the west. And we have that system that's going to be moving through the northeast, specifically West Virginia. That snow is going to begin May 2nd and into the third, take a look at that, 16 inches for snowshoe. Who knew? With more snow falling on western PA and Ohio through the first week of May. Shut up, Al! Man, you got to hear him back talking. Seismic update. No quakes of note. We have some interesting rockers. 2.8 in Ridgely, Tennessee. This is an ongoing pattern out there. We have a rumbler in the Camp Chocked at 4.3. It looks like the biggest quake of note here is a 5.4 near Japan. But other than that, all is quite quiet. Let's take a look at that. That's a surface quake. Nothing to be worried about, in my opinion. Shivalouche, new lava growth continues after we had that massive paroxysm which buried some of the stations there we showed you last night. The local volcanologist, Alexei Demunichuk, posted the latest post-massive eruption images of the volcano and that's good news for us. We get to see some of these. Let's take a look. Before and after. Yeah, that whole dome is blown off. So that is what's happening at Camp Chakta. And more activity is continuing. Visual observations confirmed new lava growth from the active partially destroyed lava dome area. The new lava dome growth appears to ooze out as erupted viscous lava. So that's what's going on at Chivalouche. No other volcanoes of note. Well, actually, I do digress. There is one of note, and it is Barren Island, which has begun erupting. Hasn't erupted for some time. This time, a substantial puff to 15,000. And I did click on it. Here we are at the stats. Barren Island Volcano Volcanic Ash Advisory, 15,000 feet moving northwest, according to observations. And this is, I think, one of the only volcanoes that is owned by India. That's quite an interesting statistic there. So the only Indian volcano is erupting. Space Weather News Update. We had an impulsive M7.1 flare earlier today from Active Region 3288. This is after the M2.4 from the new Active Region turning over the limb. And we will show you the difference between those. The, this is what gave the first M flare as it was turning around the, the limb. This is what shot out the impulsive X flare as it's leaving the scene, proving ever more about the earth facing quiet and why we don't get struck during grand solar minimums by large flares because it seems to build up the power until the big boom, which could be coming soon. So stay tuned. But the three-day geomagnetic forecast, all quiet on the Western Front, as if you woke up this morning and noticed bluebird skies, no, you probably saw some chemtrails when we were down here at KP1 earlier this morning, didn't you? Yeah, those are just cosmic ray-induced, consistent contrails. Now the U.S. military is tracking another mysterious balloon. Can you believe it? And... This reporter at MSNBC is poking a little fun at it, calling it a UFO. As officials tell NBC News, the government is tracking another UFO over American soil. Joining me now is NBC News Pentagon correspondent Courtney Kuby. I came to you a little fast, Courtney. Um, I'm being <laughs> cheeky about UFO. It's another balloon. Tell me what we know. 
So it appears to be another balloon. I will say the officials that we're speaking to say that they don't believe this is a Chinese balloon, but they don't really know who owns it. It's been flying. It did fly over the last several days over part of Hawaii. Now it appears to be moving east towards Mexico. We don't exactly know where it is on that transit at this point. Unlike the Chinese spy balloon from a couple of months ago, this balloon does not appear to have maneuverability or propulsion. So in other words, it seems to just sort of be floating along with the wind. That's according to these officials, but it does have a payload. So at this point, it's just not really clear what this is. Now, the officials say at this, it also is not presenting any kind of a threat to aviation, to commercial a- aviation or planes in the sky. And it does not appear to be any kind of a national security threat. But Katie, you know, we, we pointed out to our viewers because there's another balloon unknown origin, and the U.S. is tracking it to see exactly what it is and where it goes. Is there now a policy in place of what the government will do with it, with these balloons? I mean, is there talk about when you shoot something down and when you don't? I know we asked officials this over and over again uh, during the last melee, um, and there was never really a clear answer. Has one since been formed? So from a military perspective, there is a very clear checklist that existed during all of the, the, the February time of the, the balloons that were shot down over several days to now. And it still exists. And if it's an immediate threat, the commander of NORTHCOM NORAD, General Glenn Van Herc, actually has the authority. If, if it presents an immediate threat, they know it's armed it, it, and it may be uh, something that could do immediate damage. He actually has the authority to shoot it down. But there's also a checklist that exists. So if something they look at things like commercial aviation, does it present an immediate threat to those? Is there something about any kind of an unknown flying object that it could be a threat to people on the ground? Sounds like we're a bunch of bumbling idiots and we don't know what a single balloon is flying over our airspace. That's not good news. Well, let's get into more interesting space weather that doesn't involve balloons, for goodness sake. How about seeing Mercury's giant comet-like tail in a stunning new image as it passes close to the sun? Mercury's comet-like tail is made predominantly of sodium ions, But Mercury isn't the only celestial body in our solar system that exhibits a tail. Our own moon also exhibits a tail, as well as Venus and even Pluto. So that's interesting. Maybe all of these objects are captured comets. Now the godfather of AI quits Google with regrets and fears about his life work. Jeffrey Hinton, who won the Nobel Peace Prize of Computing for his trailblazing work on neural networks, is now free to speak about the rise of AI, and he is scared to death. He consoles himself with the normal excuses, if I hadn't done it, somebody else would have, according to Hinton, who had been employed by Google for more than a decade. It's hard to see how you can prevent the bad actors from using this for bad things. And we've already seen that AI is woke and it isn't actually an independent thinker. It's being programmed to hate freedoms and to hate America. And that is very scary. The river's rising. All rivers are rising. It's the spring runoff. And the Pagosa Springs River, the San Juan at Pagosa, just crested last night at 2,740 cubic feet per second, eclipsing the record high of 1920 back in 1943 by 800 CFS, and it's getting higher. And we're going to be getting in in just two days when it hits that record peak. Stay tuned for more Boom. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Hit that thumbs up. It helps with the algorithm. Share this video. We are shadow banned on YouTube. They hate us and they don't want people to know this information. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. Watch all of our videos commercial free and stay tuned for the most epic run of the San Juan River ever.